Hi everybody, Robin Nichols here with what I think is a fairly essential advice on how to resize your digital pictures. Why would you want to do that? Well, if you're uploading to specific websites, if you're uploading to specific blogs, they may not have an automatic downsizing feature. All of us now shoot with pretty high resolution cameras, you know, 12, 16, 18, even 20 plus megapixels. So the internet doesn't need that. Emails don't need that. Attachments don't need to be that big because they are just huge and they will take forever to send, they will take forever to upload and they'll just cause a level of frustration that we could all do without. So how do we go about that? I've got a black and white shot here um, that I'm quite uh, keen on sending, um, but of course, as you can see in the bottom left-hand side of Photoshop Elements 11, it says it's 60.2M. What does that mean, 60.2M? Million pixels. That is a lot of pixels. So this comes from a 21 megapixel camera. And you think, well, how does 21 calculate or recalculate itself as 60 million? What you have to think about is whenever we press the shutter and take an RGB picture, that is a picture made up of red, green, and blue components, it actually splits it into its individual channels. So if mine is a 20 megapixel camera, for example, and it's an RGB image, theory tells me that it's probably three times that when it's displayed on the screen. Now, forget the confusing bit about the fact that this is black and white. It looks black and white, although I can put color into it. I want to, I've just made it go black and white, but it is still essentially a color picture. And that's why we have the three channels, 60.2, which is approximately three times the resolution of your camera. So for example, if I had a 10 megapixel camera, my RGB files on the desktop here would actually read out at the bottom about 28 and a half megapixels. You never get the full multiplication up to you know uh, 30 megapixels as you'd expect because some of the pixels around the edges don't work and so they kind of don't take those into account. Um, okay, how do we set that? Well, in Photoshop Elements, we just click on the little black arrow to the right of the field we're reading at here, and it says document size. Document profile tells me what color profile I've got set on this particular uh, uh, file. What that means is it's small RGB as opposed to Adobe RGB 1998. Now, these are very funny terms, but what they really mean is the amount of color levels that they can record. Generally, if you're a beginner, sRGB is fine because the interweb, the, inter the internet and you know, websites, blogs and things are a limited color space. So you're going to lose some color anyway. Whenever you print pictures, you're going to lose some color because printers can't handle massive ranges of color because after all, it's only red, green and blue and they spray ink onto paper and it's a very sort of rough process. So bottom line is sRGB is kind of okay. Document dimensions, this tells me if I print it at 72 dots or pixels per inch, I get it 1.3 mega, uh, meters by 1.9, nearly 2 meters wide, and so on and so forth. So there are other little tools in there. Anyway, I'm not to talk about that. I'm here to talk about resizing it. So let's say somebody rings me up and says, Robin, Robin, I want to see that amazing portrait you just did of me. Uh, send me an email. So if I send a 60 megabyte email to this person, she's going to be pretty unhappy because even if I save it, and here we go, and I'm going to save it on my desktop, and I'm going to save it as, uh, let's say, Natalie you know, Test Shot or something like that, save it as a JPEG because I know that JPEGs are pretty good because they squash down, don't they? So if I click on Save, the JPEG Options box appears, and this is always kind of stage two when you're saving a JPEG. And what this is going to say, say to me, see, it took a little bit of time. It suddenly said 8.6 megabytes. So somehow this technology manages to compress Natalie. She won't feel a thing. It compresses this photo from 60.2 down to 8.6. Wow. It's pretty cool. It's amazing technology. Now, if you push for time and they say, look, I really have to have the whole resolution, what you must do then is probably reduce the quality. And this is increasing the amount of squeeze. See, I've just dropped it two points to version 10 or to quality 10, and it's now 2.7 megabytes. So I can email that quite easily. And the really cool thing about this is it actually is not going to damage the picture too much. I know if you're pedantic and you're obsessive about your pixels, you'll say, oh, no, 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 of course it will damage. And it will do. You know, you can be obsessive about it and you can look at it at a thousand percent and you can see damage done to the pixels. But as a general rule, you can drop the image quality options down to about seven or eight. I, I generally kind of keep it as high as possible. Eight, it recalculates its 1.4. Well, I know my fiber optic cable internet connection can quite easily send a file that works out at 2.7 megabytes. No problem at all. And you can see the picture looks pretty schmick in the background. If I were to crank it down to something ridiculous, you'll see in the background, you'll see that the picture actually deteriorates quite considerably. 
or in fact even more dangerous you may not see let's go down to the ridiculously small side look at that 375 so I could send 10 of these no problem in an email when I download or rather when the recipient downloads and double clicks and opens them in Photoshop elements or Photoshop whatever they'll bounce back up to 60.2 so although they're being transported in a different form in a compressed form I'm going to leave it at 8 1.4 megabytes no worries I'm going to leave it at 8 um, when we double click on the icon it then bounces back it puts all the pictures back together and the probably problem is puts all the pixels should I say back together the problem with that of course is when you double click it doesn't always get all the pixels in the right place and that is a bit of an issue um, and you know you get you get softness you get out of focusness you get funny colors if you're using a color picture all that kind of stuff so long long story short we need to go to the image menu and we need to go to the resize nearly got the wrong thing there Robin resize and we want to resize the image size so we get this image dialog box the image size dialog box so it tells me immediately what I know 60.2 megabytes okay no problem I want to resample the image so the process I'm showing you today is resampling or interpolate okay so we need to have that checked obviously I want to constrain the proportions because if I make Natalie's proportions go out she's going to ring me up and be very unhappy about that um, and I want you know 672 pixels per inch if she's only ever going to look at it on screen is absolutely perfect okay so what do we do I say to myself mm, it's a it's a vertical picture so I'm going to say make the height 1000 pixels so you can see immediately because it's constraining proportion it actually makes the width proportionally shorter and look what it's done it's now 1.9 megabytes instead of 60.2 wow so that's pretty funky if I click OK Natalie shrinks down you can see under the document size it says 1.91 and I can zoom in a bit and that looks fantastic it only begins to look a bit fuzzy or pixelated if I look too closely and there you can see all the pixels because I said to it I want to view it at 1000 pixels across I'm now viewing it at over 1000 pixel across and that's why it begins to look soft so like with everything in digital imaging if you enlarge it further than the pixels technically allow you to go which in this case is 1000 pixels high uh, you'll begin to see softness or pixelation happening so now when I choose to save this and again I'm going to put it on the desktop and compare it uh, now test okay and we'll save it and you'll see the dialog box comes up and even at level 12 it's only 300 kilobytes so at level 12 the best quality the least amount of squashing I can send 10 of these no problem at all but if I bring it down to say level 10 185,000 K isn't that amazing really really small so if I go down to what I call a sort of street legal minimum 100 K so I could send 20 of these in an email no problem at all so that very simply is how we do it now questions about this the format options what the heck is this baseline standard baseline optimize okay so 337 and 308 I'm not going to get terribly excited over that because it's saving almost nothing okay and it, as you can see it's a standard format with optimized Huffman encoding do you really want to know what that means it's a different way of rejigging the pixels when it's compressed so squashing them down and then replacing them in the right place when you double click and open the image up again it's ever so slightly faster as it says optimize you would use that if you were working on a blog or a website and you got say 10 or 15 pictures on the same page you want them to display really quickly so any kind of optimization is a good thing what I'd venture to say though you would probably dive into this little function here called save for web because that allows you to see immediately the different, uh, different qualities you get from different JPEG compressions and you can minimize the damage that JPEG compression does much better with much better control than you can just using this standard uh, dialog box here so baseline optimize mm, you know is okay progressive is one that we don't really use anymore because as you can see here it causes image to display in multiple passes now you, we used to do this when we had 28k dial-up modems remember those dreadfully slow thing I don't know how we managed to survive and the idea is instead of just looking at a white hole in the in the web page waiting for the picture to download which may take I don't know 10 or 20 or 30 seconds what it did was show you immediately a very small very faint 30 percent of the image and then in another 10 seconds another 30 percent would appear so making 60 percent and so on and so forth so I could choose level you know three levels or even four or five levels as I say we we basically don't use them and for most intents and purposes baseline standard is absolutely perfect okay just to recap very briefly I press control alt and I or control alt and I okay well control option and I if you're on a Mac of course and I make sure that resample image is checked okay as a general rule if you're going to downsize pictures for web for emailing for upload to blogs you know they go down to about a thousand pixels along the longest edge 
and as a general rule, their size then is going to be about 1.9 megabytes, around that. You know, if it's 2, 2.2, 1.7, that's fine. But just watch that figure. So if it's 667 by 1,000 pixels, you know you're in the, in the right place, especially if it's 1.9 megabytes. Uncompressed file size. And of course, when I click OK and save it, it's going to ask me, can I reduce it by setting those JPEG options from 12 down to 11, 10, 9, 8? You'll probably work nicely if you stick around 8 or 9 in terms of JPEG quality options. And that very simply is how we reduce Im image size in order to email to our friends, upload to ppsop.com, how to upload to a blog. It just saves time. If you upload, sorry, for example, to Flickr and you upload 60 megabyte files, A, you've got something that people are quite keen on stealing because they've got the high resolution file online. B, it's going to take you hours to upload all your shots up to Flickr. And C, unless you're printing through Flickr, there's very little advantage having a high resolution file up there. You're just wasting bandwidth, time and loads of space.